Hello! Today I'm going to show you how to make your own book out of brown paper bags. You can use it as a diary or a memory book or whatever kind of book you want it to be really. It's completely up to you. The whole thing cost me about £2 to make in total because I only needed to buy the brown paper bags to actually make the book with and all the fabrics and buttons and whatnot that I knew I wanted to decorate it with I already had here so I didn't need to buy any of them. I made two slightly different books, one with a spine and one without so that I could show you the difference in how to make them. And these look like this. One with a spine and one without a spine. I chose this book, which is the one with a spine, to use as a memory book because I know I like to keep all my tickets and things from where I've been before, so whether that's a theatre or a concert or things like that, I like to have them all in a book so that I can look back at them as if they're a kind of album. And this way, I can put all my tickets into the pages and because I've tied it with a ribbon, they're not going to fall out. I chose this book to use as a diary because I've put about double the amount of pages in that I did in the other book and you always need a lot of pages to write things in in a diary and because it doesn't have a spine it's a lot easier to open and I think it's just easier to write in when you can open things fully. For my memory book I filled the pages and I covered them with different patterned and coloured papers and I didn't use a paper stack for this, I actually googled digital scrapbooking freebies and you can get hundreds of different websites and things like that where you can download your own pages but the one thing I would say with this is think about how many pages you are going to use because that's a lot of ink if you're going to print off a lot of pages worth so it might be worth actually just buying your own paper stack. Also if you're going to download things be careful what you click on because whenever you can download something for free there are always going to be virus links and I did get a virus around the time that I downloaded these. I don't know if that's what it was from but it's a possibility so just watch out. Anyway without further ado let's get started. What do you need? Brown paper bags, I use eight in this video. Strong PVA glue, I highly recommend tacky glue which I bought from Hobbycraft. I'm impatient so a hot glue gun is useful as it speeds up the process. Card the same colour as your bags just in case it shows. Fabrics and buttons are completely optional because you can substitute them for whatever you want to decorate it with. To assemble the pages, I first glue the fold in the bottom of the bag down and then smooth it over with a bone folder to make sure there are no bubbles or creases. Then I fold over the whole bottom from where I've just glued to make a mini page. If you don't have a bone fold, then just use the edge of a ruler or something, it's absolutely fine. Once I've done this for all my bags, I remove the handles by literally just tearing them off gently away from the bag. Then I arrange my bags in order, starting with a big side and keeping the small pages back to back like this. After that I measure the height of my book and cut out single strips of card this length with a width of 2 inches wide. I use a blade to cut them out simply because it's easier but scissors are just fine as well. I bend each strip in half lengthways to cover an inch on each page. To actually assemble the bags, I take two at a time and apply glue to the card before securing it to, onto the bag on each side. Then I smooth it over again with a bone folder. I do two pages at a time until they're done. Then I move on to joining two sets of two together in the same way. before I finally meet in the middle to finish assembling the book. To give a neat finish, I glue down all the folds in the edges of all the pages on both sides. To cover the bags for my pages, I thought tea stained paper would give it an aged look that would mean you could still see my writing. So I dampened some paper and then I rubbed in the contents of a tea bag to give it its colour. I measured around my book on the paper to get the size of the pages, then I used this as a template for the rest of my pages. I counted four sets of mini pages in my book, so I halved four of my tea stained pages to fit them. To stick them down I just used a normal Pruitt stick as I'm not trying to hold anything together, I'm simply, I just simply need it to stick down. On my other book, I stuck the ribbon to tie it up onto the pages first with a hot glue gun. To 
to attach it to a cover with a spine, which I got from a new duvet set that I had. I use my hot glue gun down the spine first and wait until it dries. Then I glue along the edges of the cover page, gluing over the ribbon as well, and then I stick the cardboard down. For the book without a spine, I roughly measure around the edge of the book for the size of the cover and then cut it out. I left a slight overhang, but then I changed my mind later on and cut it off. Then I align the edge of my book to the cardboard and glue the spine edge of the pages down first. And then the same for the other side. Then I glue in the other edges to secure the cover in place. And now your book's assembled. The next part when I'm actually decorating my books, I do add fabric to the cardboard, although I changed my mind after I'd already stuck the cardboard down, so if you also want to add fabric to your cover of your book, I definitely recommend doing it before you stick the pages in, because it's just a lot easier and neater that way, and that way you don't see the edges of the fabric as well. I measured my book roughly on this purple pattern fabric and cut it out, leaving about an inch and a half's overhang on each edge. I used Hobbycraft fabric glue on the cardboard, folded over the fabric and used a bone folder to tuck it into the pages to look a little bit neater. For the side of my ribbon, I simply cut out a tiny hole, fed the ribbon through and then stuck the side down afterwards. After I glued down all of the sides with the fabric, I selected a variety of purple buttons and arranged them how I wanted them to look on the front cover. I glued the larger buttons down first and then I glued all along where I wanted the smaller buttons to go. This does leave a slight sheen on the fabric afterwards, but I'm impatient and you can barely see it, so I didn't want to glue all the buttons down individually. Then that's done. For the spineless book, I cut out strips of ribbon and glued it over the inside top and bottom edges. Then I used a bobby pin to keep it in place until it dried. Once I'd covered the front, I glued a thinner navy ribbon as a border around the edge. And again, I used a bobby pin to hold it in place until it dried. On the back cover, I used a thin black ribbon close to the spine, but this ribbon stuck well so I moved straight onto the red and I used strips to cover the cardboard and stuck the overhang on the inside cover.
After you've decorated it however you want to, you're done. Okay guys, that's it now. Thanks for watching. If you've got any questions, leave them in the comments below. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe and let me know what you think and I'll see you in the next one. Bye. And decorate. I always keep talking about things I've done wrong. All these little things